In this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we have Wolfgang Poker, who is the fastest talker on all of YouTube, playing in a 1-2 game in Texas. He's going to end up making the top two pair. Pretty good hand. Let's see how this one goes. How about Ace Jack this time? I'm on the button and I raise it up to $12 over a few limps and we get called exclusively by the under the gun limpers. So we're going heads up in position to a flop. All right. Two people limped. Wolfgang raises the Ace Jack offsuit playing $400 deep, 200 big blinds. And then under the gun limper only calls. Fine, fine and good so far which comes jack high, jack 10-7, rainbow, and the opponent checks it over to me. I Ooh, one thing I want to point out. Wolfgang said here, the flop comes jack high, which is correct and accurate and good. But he very quickly corrects himself. It comes jack 10-7. Realize jack high, jack 10-7 is very different than jack high, jack 7-2, okay? Whenever you are thinking about poker, make sure you realize that jack 10-7 is incredibly different than jack 7-2 or jack 6-2. Because on Jack-6-2, the under-the-gun player is going to have almost nothing. But on Jack-10-7, the under-the-gun player is going to have a lot of stuff. Because if you think about what most under-the-gun players limp with, it's going to be a lot of middle connected cards, pairs, big cards, etc. And all of that nails Jack-10-7. All right, let's see what happens. Obviously, top pair, top kicker should be good here around 99% of the time. So when the under-the-gun checks it to me, I go for a bet here of $11, and he puts in the call. Turn. All right, we go for continuation bet. Pot here was 30 bucks, and we go for 11. I think I would go a little bit bigger on Jack-10-7 playing very deep stack just because the board is very coordinated. And if your opponent does have some sort of a draw, betting 11 gives them okay odds. And if they have some sort of a pair, it's probably going to be where they draw. And those would also call a much bigger bet. So I think in this scenario, maybe exploitatively even, I would go a little bit bigger, more like $25 because I don't think anybody with a pair is going to fold. And I don't think anybody with a gut shot with an overcard is going to fold comes the ace it's the ace of clubs obviously we improve to top two here opponent checks it to me for a second time and I... all right turn brings the ace of clubs pretty good card for us obviously king queen comes in but the opponent could easily have a hand like ace 10 or a seven or king jack etc i do think that this card will scare out some people if they have a hand like jack nine for top pair and a gut shot or maybe 10 nine for middle pair and a gut shot but i think you still want to bet on the big sides or on the big side here i'd go something like pot i think that's pretty nice especially given we are playing pretty deep stacked because in this scenario it is reasonable enough enough that most people will just stick around a lot of players in these loose splashy one two games just do not like to fold and if you give them a pair and a gut shot they're going to call any amount so i think something like 45 into the 52 is pretty nice yeah, you could be beat every once in a while, but most of the time you have the best hand here. So just pile money into the pot while you still can. You need to target the pair plus straight draws at this point. I fire out for pot $50. Usually when I fire out for pot and the opponent finds a call, it's very strong and they're going to have a nutted type hand. So when the opponent tosses in two green chips and calls us here, I'm a little bit skeptical of king, queen, or some sets here. But nevertheless, we have two pair and another card is to come. All right. Wolfgang says something here where when he pots and gets called, he thinks the opponent's range is very strong. And I would kind of disagree with that. I think when the opponent raises your $50 bet, their range is really strong. And I do think most people at this point with a hand like King Queen would want to raise because they really want to get all the money in the pot. Or perhaps they would have raised it on the flop with the open-ended straight draw and over cards. So I would very much discount King Queen in this scenario. And I would also discount 9-8 for the straight as well. Because I think both of those hands probably find a raise at some point. When they check and call, yeah, they have to have something. But I bet that something is going to be hand like 10-9 or queen-jack or ace-nine, something like that, that decided to splash around. So I'm thinking we're in very, very good shape at this point because I think the opponent's range is going to be missing the straights. If you do, for some reason, think when you bet 50 on the turn, your opponent's going to fold out a bunch of one pair hands then I would definitely recommend betting smaller, right? Because you really do want to get called by hands like Jack-9 in this scenario. It would be a disaster for the opponent to fold out Jack-9 because if we ever spike a Jack on the river, we're going to win a bunch of money. And if we go for a small river bet on a blank river, we can easily get paid as well. So you really, really, really want to keep in hands that are drawing thin. Imagine on the turn we did bet, let's say, $100 into the $50 pot and the opponent calls. Well, then maybe they will start to have just a whole lot of really good nut hands. But I think 50 or 40 is going to get called by a lot of pairs plus draws. Although I, I could be wrong about that. 
I don't know. Let me know what you think in the comment section below if people will call with a hand like 10-9 for $40 or $50. Anyway, let's go to the river. Which pairs the board, it comes a 10 of clubs, not exactly the best hand here, and the opponent makes it even more difficult on us and leads out for $100. Let's think about our options here for a second. Obviously Ugh. Opponent leads out for 100 when the river pairs the 10. Well, you might as well also go ahead and pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below because I'm gonna have to think about this one for a second. There are some busted draws, but not a lot, right? The opponent could have king nine for double gut shot. They would check call and check call. They could have queen nine for open ended. They would check call and check call. That's about it. Now, <laughs> they could be overvaluing a worse made hand. You may say, what worse made hands? Some people just don't know what to do with a random ace here. Now, I don't think the players are going to have a whole lot of aces, but if you give them a hand like ace nine or ace eight, they may just put in a hundred. I don't think it's a good play, but they may. I suppose every once in a while they may show up with a hand as good as like ace queen that decided to limp and then call into the gun that decides to play this way as well. You got to realize when we're playing one, two, people are just going to do things that don't make logical sense from a GTO point of view or from a, any, a, even a halfway logical point of view. We could easily be against a 10 though. So the problem here is that we're getting pretty good pot odds. The pot will be 352 after we call. So we need to be good about 30% of the time. Uh, we probably are, right? I mean, I, I hate this spot, but whenever you're kind of blocking a lot of the nut hands and the opponent may not even make this play with a random 10, although they probably would, um, I think you just got to find a call. I have torched a lot of money calling in these spots. <laughs> you all know me. I do think in general in smaller stakes games, you should probably be inclined to overfold, but I think this is one of these spots where some players will just take random nonsense top pairs or just like a weird king jack and just bet 100 because they don't know what to do. And if that is the case, then you have an easy call. Now, if you think when your opponent bets the river, they have literally a 10 or a busted draw, and there aren't actually all that many busted draws, because for all we know, maybe they don't even limp call king nine suited or offsuit from under the gun, then I think folding becomes way more reasonable. So this is a spot where if you know your opponent's strategy very well, you can certainly make a very easy call or a very easy fold. But with no reads... I would probably pay the guy 100 and be sad about it. Let's see what Wolfgang does. See, we're never raising. We're either calling or folding in the spot. We have two pair, but we're losing to king, queen, jack 10, ace 10, 7, 10, pocket sevens. It's a lot of hands here that have us beat. In terms of his bluffs, I don't really think he has too many. Is he betting thin here with ace king or ace queen? I doubt it. This is just a strange line. He probably with those hands is just checking it over to us. For that reason, and because we've been running into the best of it here all night, I find a pretty tight fold here with ace jack, but I show it face up and I think my logic is pretty sound. If all right, all right, all right. So slow down here. Slow down, Wolfgang, slow down. Um, a few things you said there. You, you do not see a whole lot of bluffs. I agree, I don't see a whole lot of bluffs, but I mean, king nine and queen nine make some sense. Also, would he overvalue an ace? I don't know, I'm telling you, in, in one, two, no limit, people just do ridiculous stuff. Also, you kind of presume he had a lot of combinations of stuff like 10, seven suited. Notice there's only one of those, right? 10, seven of spades, because the others are all on the board. Um, there's not a whole lot of combinations of pocket sevens, right? There's only three of those. I would be much more concerned about a hand like 10-9 offsuit or queen-10 offsuit than I would about the full houses. And I do think people will just make a lead out with queen-10 offsuit if he has it. And I do think a lot of people will limp and then call a raise with queen-10 offsuit. So this is one of these spots where, in my mind, if I beat any value hands, I'm going to find a call. And, and I realize like when the opponent leads here with a hand like ace-9, I don't even know if they're value betting or bluffing or what they're doing. But that's a hand that they would play in that manner that I, sometimes that I beat. I, I'm completely discounting king, queen, and nine, eight, because like I said, I think those played differently earlier in the hand. So I don't know. I don't know. Weird spot. Wolfgang shows face up. Will we get a show from our opponent? Let's see. If he had a hand, ace, king, or ace, queen, he'd just be checking it over to us. He I got to presume most people don't have a whole lot of ace, king, or ace, queen to begin with. I know I said they maybe have ace, queen, but remember, this player limped and then just called a race from under the gun, so I would discount ace, king, and ace, queen a lot. Here, and pretty much all the boats are just leading out. Oh, one more thing. Wolfgang said that he decided to fold because he's been running into it all night. Um, I, I don't love that mindset because just because you've ran into it a few times where your opponents have had a good hand a few times 
That does not mean that's going to continue to happen. Now, you may be playing in a game where people just don't bluff. That could certainly be true. And if that's true, well, then this fold becomes way better. But if you have been running poorly recently, that really should not impact your play much at all. Just because sometimes you're going to run poorly. That's part of the game. I don't really expect him to have any bluffs in this spot. The opponent in middle position shows us one of the hands we didn't want to see, though. Ace-King. Oh, my God. The opponent shows the ace and the king. Well, I was wrong about that, huh? I really would not have expected to run into ace-king here <laughs> close to ever because I would presume ace-king would just raise pre-flop or if it did limp, it would limp re-raise. But I was wrong. And like I said, it one tuner limit, people just do weird stuff. They do weird stuff, you know? I don't know why, why the guy bet the ace-king on the river. I don't know. Seems like a pretty easy check to me. But he led, somehow bluffed Wolfgang out of the spot. And that's, uh, that's a bad beat every which way despite the fact that... Uh, we had the best hand. So that's a, that's a rough one. That's going to be it for today. I don't even know any good advice to tell you at the end. I always try to give you a fun sentence at the end. I mean, I guess when you make two pair, don't fold. That's the lesson for today. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, click the like and subscribe button below. Also, make sure you check out Wolfgang's blog. He does, a, he does an excellent video blog here on YouTube. We'll put a link in the description below. Huge thanks to him and uh, thanks to all of you. Good luck. Have fun. And yeah, don't fold two pair.